It's medicosis perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our discussion on bleeding and coagulation disorders. There is a playlist on my channel. In the previous video, we have discussed the difference between serum and plasma. Today, let's discuss the smooth endothelium, the amazing lining of your blood vessel. As you know, your blood vessel wall has three layers, tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia. Some people say tunica interna, tunica externa. I couldn't care less. Now, let's get started. Here are the previous videos in my playlist, so make sure to subscribe and save this playlist. Medicosis Words of Wisdom Primary hemostasis is balanced on the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the smooth endothelium and the thrombocytes. The smooth endothelium wants the blood to flow. Thrombocytes demand blood coagulation. The endothelium wants the blood to flow. The platelets want the blood to thrombose. Hemostasis. Hemo means blood. Stasis means stable. Not to be confused with homeostasis because homeo means similar. Stasis means stable. Together they mean standing still or equilibrium. Homeo doesn't mean home. Okay. Some people say homeo means home. They're wrong. And homeopathy... Pathy means pathology and homeo means similar. It's the idea that like cures like. Homeopathy is not science. It's kind of an alternative medicine nonsense. But the idea is like in chemistry we have like dissolves like. So they discovered like let's say like cures like. So if you have um, like leukemia. If we take leukemia cells from you and put it in another patient, these leukemia cells can cure him from leukemia. Some nonsense like that. Or arsenic. Arsenic could be poisonous for you, but it could cure you from cancer. Yeah, sometimes, like some cases, this is correct, but it's not always. So make sure not to follow these guys on the internet, these gurus who are selling you a bunch of crap. Back to our homeostasis. Homeo blood stasis table. Homeostasis means blood clotting to stop bleeding and preserve the blood. So, homeostasis, prevention of blood loss. Steps of homeostasis. First, if you bleed, if you cut the vessel, first vasoconstrict. Decrease the surface area so that you lose less blood. Temporary platelet plug, also known as primary hemostasis. Who is the hero here? The platelet. Next, we have coagulation or secondary hemostasis. Who is the hero here? Lots of heroes called coagulation factors secreted by the liver. Fibrinolysis, because after making a clot, let's be like a good cat and clean after ourselves. Let's dissolve this clot and maintain the blood flow back to normal, restore the function. Some authors will exclude fibrinolysis because they claim that hemostasis is blood clotting. Fibrinolysis is destroying the clot, so don't put fibrinolysis as number four, put it as a separate category. I couldn't care less of these classifiers. I have more important stuff to do. Homeostasis is not opposite to hemostasis. In fact, hemostasis is part of the homeostasis, part of your normal body physiology. Primary hemostasis is balanced on the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the smooth endothelium, which wants blood flow, and thrombocytes, which favor coagulation. Let's talk about the endothelium. As you know, groups of cells are called tissue. We have four types of tissue. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nerve tissue. Epithelial tissue have three different types, depending on the cell shape. Squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. The smooth endothelium is squamous epithelium. The smooth endothelium, squamous epithelium. 5 times 10 to the 13th power cells. This is like an area of 6 tennis court. This is huge. It lines the blood vessel walls from the inside as well as the lymphatic vessel wall. It's lining the inside surface. Controls vessel permeability. Okay, that's why when you have pus... Pus is increased permeability, and pus is non-pitting, okay, because pus is an exudate. On the other hand, when you have pitting edema, 
due to CHF, congestive heart failure, this is a transudate. And transudate is pitting edema. Okay, it's just a clinical note. Endothelium plays a role in hemostasis, which means blood clotting and inflammatory response. If you remember inflammation, we had the nice neutrophils rolling over the endothelium. Until they find inflammation in the tissue, they will escape from the blood vessel lumen and go into the tissue to fight these ugly bacteria. So it helps in inflammation. Same thing here, platelets will roll, roll over the endothelium. But when they find a problem like an injury, they will not escape to the tissue. No, they will just here adhere and form a clot. They will call the coagulation factor to come and to lay the fibrin meshwork so that the red blood cells are stuck into the network. We have a strong plug. Also, endothelium helps in angiogenesis. And angiogenesis is blood vessel formation. And this is one of the pathophysiologies of cancer. The smooth endothelium promotes laminar flow of blood inside the vessel. Remember the harmonious antagonism. Endothelium wants the blood to flow, platelets want the blood to clot. So endothelium, I think of it as having a bipolar disorder because under normal conditions, it's anti-thrombogenic, it hates thrombus. But under abnormal conditions such as trauma, it changes, it activates, and it's stimulated and it becomes prothrombotic. It works with platelets in harmony to form a blood clot and stop bleeding. This is just amazing. Endothelium is also involved in the Furco's triad. It's not Virchow's, it's Furco. It's German. Respect the language, guys. We have endothelial damage, blood stasis, and hypercoagulability in a famous triad. Endothelial damage will release von Willebrand factor. It will stick to the platelets and promote coagulation. So, if the smooth endothelium wants the blood to flow, how does the normal endothelium prevent clotting in small vessels under normal conditions? Okay, some of this stuff will be hard in the first time. But after we are done with this series, if you come back to the slide, it will be a piece of cake. First, the endothelium provides a smooth, non-thrombogenic surface because a thrombogenic surface is by definition non-smooth. The platelets are rolling inside the blood vessel and swimming. When they find a non-smooth, rough, corrugated part of the blood vessel, they start to stick and they are get activated and they become crazy. They call their friends, other platelets, and they form a platelet plug. They call the coagulation system to make fibrinogen into fibrin a mesh work that will trap the red blood cells inside them. It's a strong, stable plug that can prevent bleeding. Also, endothelium helps with vasodilation. When the vessel wall expands, this makes it harder for platelet to aggregate because you have increased the surface area. Endothelium secretes endothelial-derived vasodilators such as nitric oxide, which promotes vasodilation and inhibits platelets and platelet aggregation. It will secrete heparin-like molecules such as heparin sulfate. So heparin sulfate looks like heparin because it's heparin-like. What did heparin do? Heparin stimulates the antithrombin-3. What does heparin sulfate do? Same thing, stimulates the antithrombin-3. Also, it neutralizes the activated, meaning they make them inactive, serine proteases, such as prothrombin, and we have factor 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. What else? Synthesize the prostaglandin I2, also known as prostacyclin, which keeps the blood cycling, meaning flowing, by vasodilating the vessel and decreasing platelet aggregation. It ex expresses thrombomodulin, which modulates thrombin. Thrombin is prothrombosis, but after being modulated, it becomes antithrombosis, which is amazing. It secretes tissue plasminogen activator, which it's called tissue plasminogen. So it converts the plasminogen into the active plasmin. This destroys the clot and restores function like the cat that cleans after itself. This is called fibrinolysis. This endothelium is just amazing. In this playlist, in a previous video, I've discussed the arachidonic acid pathway, which is an amazing video. But in brief, membrane phospholipids will give us the arachidonic acid thanks to the great enzyme phospholipase A2. By the cyclooxygenase, we have prostaglandins. By the lipooxygenase, we have leukotrienes. We start with prostaglandin G2, prostaglandin H2. 
If you are in the platelet, you will form thromboxane A2. If you are in the endothelium, you will form prostaglandin I2. What does thromboxane do? It promotes thrombosis. So thrombosis means vasoconstriction and increasing platelet aggregation. By the way, thromboxane A2 is involved in the pathogenesis of Prenz metal angina because it clogs and it constricts vessels. How about if we are in the smooth endothelium that wants the blood to flow smoothly? Form prostacycline, also known as prostaglandin I2. Prostacycline will keep the blood cycling by vasodilation and preventing the platelet aggregation. So the prostacycline came from the arachidonic acid from the membrane phospholipid of the freaking smooth endothelium. And that's my friend, one of the methods the smooth endothelium prevents coagulation. Here is a nice analogy for you. The endothelium and platelets are like the president and congress. Deep down they hate each other. But at times of trouble, also known as trauma, they can act towards a common goal, also known as hemostasis, which is blood coagulation to stop bleeding. And as you know, we have two types of hemostasis. We have the primary hemostasis, thanks to the platelet plug, and we have the secondary hemostasis by the coagulation factors. Quick summary. Primary hemostasis is balanced on the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the smooth endothelium which wants the blood to flow and the thrombocytes which favor blood clotting. The smooth endothelium prevents blood clotting by being smooth, providing a smooth non-coagulatory surface and by vasodilation, release of nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, heparin sulfate which acts like heparin, Prostaglandin I2, also known as prostacycline, which keeps the blood cycling. Thrombomodulin, which modulates thrombin to become not prothrombus. And secreting TPA, which help fibrinolysis and just remove the clot. The smooth endothelium has a bipolar disorder. Under normal conditions, it's antithrombogenic. It secretes nitric oxide. However, under abnormal conditions such as trauma, it's activated and stimulated and becomes prothrombotic and secretes other substances such as endothelin, which is the protein of the endothelium. This leads to vasoconstriction and increased platelet activation. Like the President and Congress, when there is a trauma and a common goal, they can work together. This, my friends, is education as it should be, not your broke professor with some interesting theories. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and you can get 60 plus notes if you go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thanks for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. I'll see you in the next video.